Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will start to design our UI. Hooray! So, click onto the app like this, and we will see our app where we left off. I will, um, I will hide the debugging area, and also the project navigator like this. And if you didn't click onto the main storyboard, storyboard, click onto main storyboard, and the. If you recall, um, the main dot storyboard is where we can design the whole UI of your app. So in this video, we will use the main dot storyboard to design the whole UI. Okay. So, and if you recall, this one window is represents a view or a screen on your iPhone. But look at the size of this. Why is it squared? Okay. If you if you notice. We don't have a squared iPhone or we don't have a squared iPad. Okay. I think the iPhone 5 is 16 by 9. I, I'm not sure about the iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, but the iPad is pretty much 4 by 3. So why is it um, a squared like this? Well, it comes down to the universal things. It comes down to the compatibility with this single view. Apple wants us to design one view like this, one UI like this, and it can work on both the iPhone and the iPad, okay? So that it has very unified experience, user experience, when the user comes to use your iPhone app or the iPad app. So that's the reason. But in this video, in this project, we will create an iPhone app, and pretty much we want to have this this is just the simulator. Like we want to pretty much design the whole thing on the actual iPhone screen so that we look at like where where is the element aligned. So, okay, makes sense. So I will click onto the utilities pane and click into the v this um, yellow circle like this. And over the first tab over the utility pane, I will have the identity and type and interface builder document. I will uncheck use side classes. Okay. And choose iPhone and then disable side classes. There we go. We have the normal white tall iPhone screen. Okay. So actually let's start building the UI. So if you look at the UI so far, uh, the UI so far in the introduction, we have a background color, I'm sorry, a background image, right? So we need an image on the phone, on the view. So over the um, right hand side on the util utility pins, let's drag up what is the object palette on the third pin like this, on the third pin, uh, tab. I want to search for something called an image view. Okay, there we go, image view. See that? Or we can just type it image view and we have it. And what it is, it, it display, display a single image or animation described by an array of images. Okay, so it display a single image and that's what we need, okay? So how are we going to have this image view, this object, this image view and make it the background of our app. Well, let's just drag it like this. Okay, see that? I want it so that it will like full, it will fill the whole screen. Okay, and when we drag it, you see two dotted to dash blue guidelines. If you're familiar with the apps like pages or things like Keynote or things like Sketch, you can see those blue guidelines or yellow very often. It is what um, it is what the way Apple guides us where the view, the elements is centered or to the left or to the right of the container. Okay, so we want it to fill the whole screen and centered like that. So how are we going to set the image? Right, right. We have this is just kind of like the generic image view but we want to set the image okay 
what I want to do is I want to set the image of the UI image view like right here and I prepare for you um, some of the assets some of the pictures and um, actually the pre the code I already write like some of the just some of the code okay um, and I want to have some image over here things some image that I collect from Flickr they're very beautiful and uh, I don't have a license for that but um, we don't use it for sales or anything so okay so just for the learning <laughs> okay so I want to import this images folder into the project how am I going to do that I will open the project navigator like this and I will make some space here okay I hope you see it and the images I will just drag the whole folder into this you will see you will see like that and I will place it inside the inspirers folder okay there we go Xcode asks us choose an options for adding these files well I would like you to click the copy items if needed what it does is it actually make a copy from the original folder the image inspires assets to the project um, folder like this let me show you okay we open fire developer iOS 101 and inspires this is the project thing okay let's say I want to copy if needed okay over here I don't have any images I, I just have the images dot XC asset but when I click finish there we go we have the image here it will copy it like that you see that okay if we don't click the copy then it won't have a copy over here what it does is this the Xcode project it will reference into this folder images folder and what we don't want is uh, because it's in a directory the desktop directory like this what if I move it into somewhere if what if I don't need it anymore I thought that I don't need it anymore and I delete it so the reference is reference to something there's nothing over here so over there so your project will do some weird thing okay so there we have it we have the images folder like that we can expand it like this and we see some images okay we see those and let's close that and go back to main dot storyboard so I want to select one image so that I can see what is the UI is like right so click onto the image click onto the UI image view and over the fourth um, the fourth tab we show attribute inspector click onto that and we if you choose correctly the UI image view correctly we will see you image view okay and the first thing that let's choose this one click onto that and we can choose the images remember you see that we see some image one image two image three where does that come from well it comes from what we have imported so far okay see I tell you export is really cool okay so let's choose image one yes I like this one yeah I like the image one better <laughs> okay or we can just even like that just change the name okay so there we have it we have a background but we need something to display the text on display the text on the of the quote right and we also need a button remember we have a background and a text and a button okay so let's deal with the text first so what we need is a label let's type a label a label represents a uh, static text on the view okay let's drag it drag it over the view like this and again I want to center it using the blue guidelines okay and I see some of the dots like this and that m helps me to resize again use the blue guidelines like that okay and like this 
Okay, I don't want it to fill the whole screen because I want to have a buttons over here. Okay, so let's configure this label because remember we have the white text and bigger fonts and a little bit bold. Okay, so over the attribute inspector again, the third one, the fourth one, we have the label. Choose the label, right? Okay, so let's this one allows me to change the text the the prefix the default text of this label i will choose something like stay hungry stay bullish okay very nice see that and let's choose the color to be white see that white color and i want the font let's choose this t button i want it to be custom and let's say, yeah, maybe how about take a new regular, should be fine. Size is 35. Okay, done. Okay, you see, this is not very okay because the text it cut and it has dot dot dot. Okay, I want it to be, of course, I want it to be centered, alignment centered, but I want, I don't want to cut like this. What we need to do is we want it to be multi lines, multiple lines. Okay, so we have to align like this and stay foolish down here. So we can choose the lines. But look, we don't have anything to say like multi lines. We can have three, four, five, six. But what if the text is more than that or less than that? Well, this is a um, snake, um, a neat thing. We can just select uh, put zero. What Xcode does is it will configure the text for us. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So let's deal with the button. Again, we will very straightforward. We will select a button. Okay. Type for the button and choose it. Drag it over the view. See that? You, again, use the dot dash blue guidelines. And I want it to be fills the whole width like that. Okay, again, use the blue, blue guidelines. Okay. Um, I don't see it very clearly because it's clear color. So I can choose it like that. And let's configure it with the attribute inspector. So the text color, I want it to be white. See that? Very nice. Um, let's drag. Let's drag it over, scroll it down, and I see the view. This is the view of the button, okay? And want the background color to be, let's say, this color. Let me show you the hex, hex color of this, okay? Oh, something like that. C4-3D-4-7. Maybe I will put it into a um, downloadable file for you to see it, okay? So we have that, and now we can drag it over the corner, and again use the dash blue guidelines. Okay, but this size is fifty-five. I want it to be sixty, the height. We can do that, or we can just type it in, like configure it. So choose the button, and over the fifth tab, like this, we have what is called the size inspector. We can select the size. Okay. The X is what it is on the X, um, on the X coordinate, X Y coordinate. The width is three twenty. That's good. Height is sixteen. That's good. Okay, and maybe this uh, red is a little bit like dark. I can choose something like this. Okay, that's better. Let me show you the hex color. F F six 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 six. Okay. If you wonder where is the hex color comes from, you can choose by default, it will be like this. I will choose like that. Okay. And I will choose RGB sliders. What it means is red, green, blue. All the colors on your computer can be uh, com um, computed and represents based on the how many red do you want, how much green or blue do you want. Okay. So that's the graphics things. So maybe we can choose opacity. No, not very good. Okay. Maybe 90. 
okay? Like that. So the opacity will make the button to be like blurred or it's not blurred, you can see through the button, okay? Like that. So we have this, but we want the button to be inspired. So over here, the button, I will change it into inspired. Um, sorry, <laughs> inspire us, or even it's just inspire me. Okay, and let's ch change the font. I want to custom start maybe uh, theme. Okay, no, regular fifteen. Change it. 13 done there we go or oh, let me change it into custom family i would choose a veneer next okay and the style i use demi boat okay so that it match what i shown you the or yeah demi boat and that and this one i would choose everything next also change the font I want to change it several times so that you see you are familiar with all the buttons and things like that. I will choose every new next again. Okay, over here. The family is every next. The style, maybe regular is fine. Unshallite. No, maybe regular. Okay, the size 35 is good. There we go. We have the whole UI that we need. Let's run it to see what it's like. Let's choose that, click run. Yeah, we're a simulator. Okay, so we see the image. We see the quote and it inspired me. But look at that, look at that ugly white thing. Why is it? Well, it comes to, to something called um like because if you look at this screen size it is actually the iphone 5 or iphone 5s screen size right it is not as tall and big as the iphone 6 so this screen this thing it will cut off like that because this we just have the view like this on the iphone 5 5s screen size so we have to deal with that. We have to deal with those uh, screen sizes. But it, it is over the um, scope of these videos. So we will talk about it in later. Okay. So right now, one way to fix this so we can test the app is choose the simulator to be iPhone 5S. Okay. Let's close and run. There we go. I hope it works. <laughs> Okay, inspire us, and there we go, we have it. Yep, right now it doesn't do anything because we just finished designing our UI. Okay, cool. Well, congratulations, we have designed our first iPhone app. This is a big milestone, it's a giant step because we know all the things like the object palette, how to use the view on the main storyboard, how to drag out items like this, okay? How to configure those UI elements. There are a lot of those, but we learn quite a lot. We learn how to um, change the uh, default text, how to change the font, which is essential, which is incredible in iOS apps. We can change the alignment. We can change how many lines do you want. We can fix it, uh, put it into like multiple lines and let Xcode decide for us, okay? We can choose, we change the color, the background of the buttons. We have a UI image to be the background color, background image of our app. That is a lot of things so far. So congratulations and good work. Okay, I see you in the next video.